Right, so we're back in for another training session, and I know with the last video I said that would be the last one of the year, but I was supposed to have a, a night out on Wednesday, and that got cancelled because of the weather, so I feel fresh, so I thought we might as well just film another, another training session. So that's now prep officially started. Sent my 20-week out check-in to Nick this morning. Not heard back from him yet, but I'm presuming that the, the food will drop just a touch today. So it's been announced, I think, since the last video. Yeah, it definitely has, yeah that the, the Scottish Two Bros Regional is going to be on the 19th of May, and which times really well with the pro qualifier I want to do, because I want to do the Spanish Amateur Olympia in Alicante on the 2nd of June, I think it is. So that's a two-week gap, which <clears throat> two weeks is the ideal for me and for most people when it comes to competing, is to do one show, two weeks later do another. It gives you a chance to kind of sort any kind of rebound that happens off the back of the show in terms of water allows you to clear that out, and then as of the, the week out mark, you should be ready to quote unquote peak again, as much as I hate that word. So 20 weeks, I was weighing at 287.8 this morning. So I'm estimating that probably about 25 pounds needs to come off. Um, but this is definitely my leanest starting point ever. As I kind of noted in the last video is that we've come down from 303 from the start of September and kind of slowly brought body weight down. Um, with a lot of ease, to be honest. There was, there was no real, I don't want to say effort, because there's always effort, but not as much effort as just, say, suffering six weeks out from a show. So that came off relatively easy. So now we're in a kind of good spot to kind of pull down from now, and that's why I think a wee food drop can go in today. So calories were sitting at 5,000 for five weeks. Prior to that, 5,800. Prior to that, 6,800. So it's been a, a nice steady decline over the past three or four months. So. But yeah, we'll do back today. As I've kind of noted on Instagram a few times is that training just now is quite intuitive. I'm just throwing in whatever I want. The structure's still kind of there. So I pull down, I plate loaded, pull down rows, deadlifts, so on and so forth. But playing around with exercise selection, um, intensifiers, just doing whatever feels good at the time. So for instance, on Tuesday, trained legs, just done five working sets. Shoulders, yes, no, sorry, shoulders two days ago. I've done like something like 15 plus sets. So it just depends how I feel. Um, I think, you know, I've been doing this long enough that I can kind of just gauge on the day what I want to do and, and what I feel my body needs. So I'm going to go with that today. Got Darren, one of my clients in today to train with me. One of my good friends, because I know he'll hate if I just refer to him as a client, um, to train back with me. So he's uh, been under my wing for a few years now, so he knows exactly how, how hard to train and how hard to push himself. So it'll be good to get him in for a back session and yeah, I think that's it. So enjoy. So uh, <clears throat> forearms have been feeling quite tight the past month or so. So I switched to a, a super knitted grip for the pull down. And with uh, obviously my grips there, just takes the forearm out of the equation. So that's the only reason I swapped this one. So we'll do three, three working sets and then probably just drop after that. Nice and simple, nothing too, nothing too complicated. So sticking to a 12-15 range, probably not going to failure with the first two sets, but we'll just see how that kind of rolls. But ideally avoiding failure the first two and then go to failure with the last one. because I've not used this grip in a while. Just gauge it. I'll take as many warm-ups as I need to kind of gauge where I need to be. some rhythm with these tempos so straight up and down just keep moving through it so you'll see there's a wee bit of body movement back and forth but we're trying to just again find rhythm with the movement and one in which the body sits nicely so trying to overly pin your your so your body into one position that's not how it's not how the human body moves it's not how any 
animal moves, is it? So you want to work with the rhythm of the machine rather than forcing it in there and just staying in that spot there. Find it. Everything just moves a lot nicer that way. Yep. We're gonna do plate loaded pull down. Same kind of deal though, we're gonna do probably three, three work in again. First two, keeping away from failure. And then the last set, probably do, we'll drop it by 30%, and then just hit rest pauses from that point. So we'll drop, this is the last set, drop, 30% off, as many reps as possible, 20 seconds, go again. Probably just one round though. two hands at a time, is because you're fixed, square on with the machine, the stretch just feels that little bit more emphasized. Whereas like, don't get a single hand, single arm is a good way of doing it, but I just feel I'm not getting the same stretch as when I'm both are being pulled up at the same time, when you're pinned by both sides. So I found as well, some might notice with pull down movements, if you're pulling it down, 
I'll be if it's a super neat grip or whatever kind of grip it is. When you're coming down, you end up crunching. We always want to emphasize trying to keep the sternum up in the air. So when I'm doing kind of any kind of pull down, you'll see that I'm trying to, as you're coming down into the shortened position there, you're trying to lift the sternum up into the air. Because if you start rounding, taking tension off the back, and you're then bringing the abdominals into play to pull it down, so just be aware of that. Demonstrated there, it's pause for 20 seconds. You're holding the stretch throughout as well. So we're not allowing the blood to leave the, the upper back. So you'll feel the difference when you do that. Just try to keep all the, the blood in there as much as we possibly can. And then back into, even if it's half reps, it doesn't matter. You're still moving weight. You're still contracting and moving the muscles. So partial reps go a long way in terms of adding just that a little bit more to the, to the set. So there's no harm in doing partial reps. They're uh, incredibly useful tool that you, can sh you should be using with everything anyway. Obviously, there's certain things that you can't do partial rep deadlifts, but for things like pull downs, absolutely utilize the partial range. So do, doing barbell rows here. So I've been switching between the barbell row and the T-bar row forever. But recently, for instance, if I'm doing kind of volume stuff, barbell row, I could do three sets of 140, just driving as much, again, much blood into the back as possible. And I've definitely seen noticeable changes in terms of volume to the muscle that applies. That's from volume increases across the board. That's not just obviously doing barbell rows, but it just goes to show that, you know, Dan's been training as long as I have, like, we're still using movements like this to build our back and to improve our back. So, whereas, I don't know how many people in, in this gym anyway, barbell row. I know Steven's barbell row behind me, but he's my client, so that's different. Um, but yeah, no barbell rowing, dumbbell row, T-bar row. Those movements will build your back. Everything matters and has a place. But we seem to be doing niche movements that are not going to produce as much size and as much progression to your backs as a movement that is a tried and tested movement for the past four million years. So get your barbell row up to 140 for a set, six to 10, and then trust me, you'll see the difference in your back and then worry about all the minutia stuff. Sticking to 8 to 12 range here. Again, I'm trying to get two sets short of failure. If I can't complete a full rep, that's the set over. I don't like this kind of pulling and trying to pull it from here. 
by that point you're not actually, you're probably not going to be as engaged through your back and you're going to end up pulling it through your arm. So at that point it's redundant. So. Could do two working sets here. So, the thing about the hundreds, again, we go back to what we've been kind of considering before is how much we're connecting with the muscle. You can easily move the hundreds for 12 reps, but I feel with the 80s, I can feel every inch of the movement working a little bit better. So, working up to like 15 reps, again, just trying to accumulate as much fatigue and volume into the, the tissue itself as possible and being able to feel it and contract it while I'm doing it. Whereas 100, I'm thinking more about keeping my body stable than I am actually feeling the, the contraction at the top. do single arm single arm cable row. This is one of the movements that that kind of niche smaller type movement. But as you see everything has its place like I said but we've 
prior to this, we've done the barbell row, the barbell row, the barbell row, the dumbbell row. So the basics are always the fundamentals, and then you move on to this kind of stuff. Take that as a lesson. Yes. Just gonna put five plates on. I just do as many reps as humanly possible. Very thought through and scientific, but it's fucking tough. So I think 220 I've done 13 or something. 13 reps, 220. I remember obviously doing deadlifts last. That's gonna impact them massively, but um, I think that's my record at this point of the workout with 220. So let's see how this goes. Right guys, so that wraps up the, the last training session of the, of the year. So it was good to kind of get that on camera and, and go through it, because this time last year, I didn't have a functioning right side, so it's good to get that, show that the year's difference in where I am, so. Really chuffed to, with, sorry, really chuffed with what I've managed to build over the past, over the past year, despite all that. So we roll into 20 weeks out tomorrow. I think 20 weeks is more than enough time 
uh, before the Scottish Regional to get in shape for that. Biggest I've ever been, leanest at this point, leanest at its weight that I've ever been. So um, I know for a fact it's going to be the, the best look I've ever brought. So learned a lot from di dieting in, in 2021, 2022. So with every, every ounce of muscle that you gain, sometimes the way in which you diet changes. So as we all know, guys who have dieted many, many a time, each prep is slightly different in some way, just due to the way in which you, you off-season, the muscle you accumulate, so on and so forth. So I think coming into 2021 20, and 2022 with a much bigger physique, I essentially over-dieted, I think. So this time round, being the biggest I've ever been, I know that I can diet on a lot more food compared to what I had previously in previous years. And the, the, the fullness that I had at the guest spot at the Granite City last year in 2022 is where I need to be fullness-wise and just combine that with show, show condition that's going to be hopefully the look that I bring this year. So I could be at the 250 at the Arnold US, hoping to fall within like the, the 260 mark. I would say. At my height, I think I need to be that weight um, to be remotely competitive at a, a really high standard level, which the Alicante show would be, as well as the Scottish Regional as well. So, so yeah, it's, it's exciting. So that's finally off-season finished. It's just take two. Um, yeah, just excited to, to move forward and go forward. So hopefully you enjoyed that. I hope you took a, wee, a few things away from it. The number one thing I wanted to kind of put forward is, you know, it's okay to be intuitive. It's okay to differ week to week what you're doing. I mean, the back session last week, I was pulling 300 off the floor. This week, I done 220 for 12 or 13 or whatever it was, 11, I don't know. Um, so slightly different in that sense. It's always good to kind of change these things up and just, just try different things week to week. So take that as, as you may. Subscribe, all the social media stuff, and see you soon.